why do you need to know the formal definition of a limit as a non-mathematician? You only need to compute them, right? Well, for a function of one variable, this will work and you can go on without the precise definition. However, as soon as you will move on to functions of more variables, which you will do at a certain point, simple rules are not enough anymore and you really need to use the, the definition. And the same holds for function of a complex variable. Well, if you have already learned how to deal with this in the easiest single variable case, moving on to the multivariable case is very doable. However, if you start looking at this definition by the time you reach multivariable calculus and try to apply it to the multivariable case straight away, this can be really hard. So maybe we should do some additional effort at this point to profit later on. So what is this formal definition of a limit? We have again our function f from d to r, where d is a subset of r, so domain. And what's the formal definition? Well, the limit x to a fx equals l, that means that for every epsilon bigger than zero, I can give you a delta such that this fx minus l smaller than epsilon, such that this fx gets very close to l, because usually this epsilon will be chosen very small. So if someone gives you an epsilon, say 0.1, you can find a delta such that this f the distance from fx to l is smaller than this 0.1, as long as x is close enough to delta. That's the trick. So you can get fx arbitrarily close to l, smaller than any value epsilon, so arbitrarily close to l, by choosing x very close to a. So how does that work in practice? Let's do some examples. Example 1. We can take f from r to r and f of x equals 2x. And I'm wondering what happens if we take x to 3. Well, we can make a graph or, or anything uh, to, to figure out that the value of this limit will probably be 2 times 3 equals 6. How are we going to prove this using the formal definition? Well, then we have to show that f of x gets very close to 6 if x is close enough to 3. So what we do is we try to estimate fx minus l, where f l equals 6 in this case. So we take fx minus l, f of x equals in this case 2x, and l, we guess that it will be 6. And then we will have to show this, that this uh, 2x minus 6 absolute value can become very small. Well, we can take out the 2, so that equals 2 times x minus 3. And now we know that this uh, x minus 3 is smaller than delta. So uh, we have uh, 2 times x minus 3 absolute value is smaller than 2 times delta. And now we have to show that this quantity gets smaller than any epsilon. So how should we choose this quantity such that uh, we have fx minus l equal is smaller than epsilon? Well, you have to choose 2 delta equals epsilon or choose delta equals epsilon over 2. So then we have that your fun fx minus l is smaller than epsilon for any epsilon. So this rule he over here dictates how small you should choose your delta. So if someone gives you, say, epsilon equals 0 0.1, then if you choose delta equals one half of that, so 0 0.05, then your in this uh, uh, interval, uh, centered at 3 with width 0 0.05, all those x values inside this interval will be, will be at most at distance 0 0.1 from 6. So all values in the interval 2.95, 3.05 will be in the interval 5.96. And if someone gives you a smaller epsilon, you give a smaller delta. And then all those values in the smaller interval will be smaller. Uh, 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 at a smaller distance from 6. Th that's the idea. For every epsilon someone gives you, you will have to be able to give a delta such that if the x's are close enough to your limit point, then the function values are, uh, are clo uh, close enough to the limit value. Let's look at an 
easier example, another example. f from f r to r, fx equals 5. So a function which is constant equal to 5. And what happens now if uh, x approaches 3? Well, the limit, we obviously guess 5 because this function is 5 everywhere. And uh, what's the proof now? Again, you use the same setup. You look at the absolute value of fx minus l, and you have to be able to get it smaller than any epsilon by choosing your delta appropriately. So fx equals 5, because fx is 5 everywhere. Your 5 is, uh, your limit is also equals 5, so you have 5 minus 5 equals 0. Uh, and you have, that, uh, you have that get to get that smaller than epsilon. Well, that's uh, smaller than epsilon for any uh, uh, for, for any x, so you can choose any delta you like. So here we see that our limit for x approaching 3 of f, uh, f of x equals 5, as expected. You see, it is not so easy to use this limit definition. Uh, try to get used to it to, uh, do by doing some of the uh, exercises. Uh, because uh, at, at a certain point you get used to the reasoning and as soon as you get used to the reasoning, well, then it's not so difficult anymore.